Thankfully, this will not last forever. Has anyone said that this week? As we begin lockdown three, before things get better, they've just got a bit tougher, haven't they? Schools are closed again. Hairdressers closed. Gyms are closed and so on. But thankfully, this will not last forever. But it is tough, isn't it? We can all relate to that as we wait for the vaccine to be rolled out. And just imagine, no more face masks. Fantastic. And no need for a body swerve when someone comes towards you. And lots and lots of church barbecues and picnics. Are we looking forward to those days? Being free again? You bet we are. Well, here's what we're going to think about over these coming few weeks at Lockleaven Church. Ultimate freedom is found not within the vaccine. Amazing though that is. It is found in a person called Jesus. And listen, we can live in true freedom even when we are in lockdown. So today we begin a new series at church and it's called Finding Freedom. And we're going to explore a book of the Bible called Galatians. It was a letter written around AD 48 by a man called the Apostle Paul. It's probably the earliest of Paul's letters we find in the Bible. And the situation is, and it's described in Acts 13 and 14, Paul and his friend Barnabas go around a region called Galatia and they start new churches all over the place, they church plants. And while there, you hear Paul and Barnabas saying to everybody, stay true to the faith, remain in grace. But in their absence, they have done the opposite. And so Paul sends a letter to the churches in Galatia. And it's here in this letter, I want us to see, just very briefly, three steps to finding ultimate freedom. Freedom even in lockdown. And here's the first step. Recognise God's grace. Recognise God's grace. Look at verses 1 to 5 of Galatians chapter Galatians chapter 1. Now, during this pandemic, there have been some amazing acts of kindness, haven't there? Such as Kinross kindness, volunteers collecting prescriptions and messages for people who are self-isolating. And broke, not broken, helping other people in need. And in a way which shows dignity. And the owners of Lockleaf and Brewery, who let us use their field opposite the Green Hotel, remember, for our church uh, driving celebration service for our anniversary. Well, here in this letter, we find the greatest act of kindness ever shown and it's undeserved kindness have a look at verse one and what does it say right at the start you notice there's a threefold repetition in the first five verses which is really quite intriguing it says this in verse one paul an apostle sent not from men nor by man but by jesus christ and god the father and then again in verse three what does it say grace and peace to you from god our father and the lord jesus christ and then in verse 4, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age according to the will of our God and Father. Why does Paul start there, do you think? He front notes this letter by saying, this grace is all from God. Three times notice, from God the Father, from God the Father, by the will of God the Father. That's where Paul starts. It is God and it's by his grace. Benjamin said to me during this week, he said, I don't like the coronavirus, Dad. Not being able to go to school or sports clubs. And there are many frustrations, aren't there? Many questions. So how do we know that God loves us? And we find the answer in this letter. Because out of his amazing grace, God sent his son. He saw a world in desperation. And he knew the only answer was his son himself in human form because it was humankind who sinned. And so 2,000 years ago, he came and he lived amongst us and his name was Jesus and he lived a perfect life. And because he lived amongst us, Jesus knows our pain. Listen, he knows our suffering. And on a hill, this actually happened outside the city walls of Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. Jesus went to his death on a cross for our sin and he rose from death and he offers us, and he offers us forgiveness today and the gift of his spirit, his presence within us. You notice that phrase in verse 4. It says to rescue us from the present evil age. So what does that mean? Let me explain. The Bible divides history into two ages. This age and the age to come. It tells us that the age to come has come already because Jesus inaugurated it. Although the present age has not yet passed away. And when someone becomes a Christian, God rescues them from the old age and transfers them into the new age. 
So what does that mean for us living in lockdown in 2021? It means this. God gives a Christian the power for living with the struggles of each day here and now. John Stott was a, a famous pastor in London, in England, and he writes this in his commentary on Galatians. He says this, Here is our God at work in grace for our salvation. First, he achieved it in history at the cross. Next, he has announced it in scripture. And thirdly, he bestows it in experience upon believers today. So the first step in finding ultimate freedom, even in a COVID-19 world, is to recognize God's grace. And the second step is to receive God's grace. Have a look at verse 3 in particular, receiving God's grace. Now, one of the places I love to go in the summertime is Keswick for a thing called the Keswick Convention. Uh, it's actually a Christian conference. And Benjamin and I go camping for a week before Alison and Clarissa join us the second week. And we have pizza in the tent and we have hot water in the showers. What more could you possibly want? Well, one time at Keswick, I heard a very moving story about some work among street children in Brazil. It was in a place called Bel Horizonte. It was a story about a girl called Pamela. Now, Pamela, she was 10 years old and she was an orphan. She did not go to school. Instead, she smoked crack cocaine and she was abused. Her, and her body was, it was full of scabies. Why? Because she would sleep beside the dogs at night time. But here's something little Pamela experienced that is absolutely profound. She received God's grace and have a look at verse 3 and notice those three words grace and peace and if you want to sum up the gospel the good news the good news of jesus in three words you don't get much better than that what is the cause of the gospel it is god's grace god's undeserved kindness and it's nothing that you or i could ever achieve by anything that we do any of our good works and what is the result of the gospel it is peace he's his grace brings peace with God, peace with each other, and peace within the shalom of God. And how does he, how does that come about? It comes about, notice, through our Lord Jesus Christ. One of my favourite verses in the Bible is John chapter 1 and verse 12. And it says this, Yet to all who received him, that is Jesus, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. I wonder, have you ever received Jesus into your own life it's the most important thing you could ever possibly do and now the final step here in finding ultimate freedom is to remain in god's grace verses 6 to 10 remain in god's grace now last week it was absolutely freezing wasn't it minus like minus 4.5 on some days i drove to mns for my lunch one day to get a sandwich and i didn't want to get out of the car heated seats are a wonderful invention i wanted to remain there and Paul is saying, remain in God's grace. Don't depart from it. Trust in Jesus alone to rescue you. And that is the life transforming message you want everybody in Rosshire to hear, don't we? But the Galatians were beginning to turn away to another gospel. And Paul is gutted. He is perplexed. What does verse 6 say? In verse 6 it says this, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and turning to a different gospel. What were they doing? Well, false teachers called Judaizers were saying that you can't just be rescued by Jesus. You must also add to it by doing good things, doing good works, be circumcised and keep the law. But as we saw at the start, this grace, it is all from God. And on that final day, when you and I stand before the perfect judge, what will your answer be? Point to Jesus and say, he gave himself for my sin. Is there any other answer? No, it is the gospel that exalts grace and glorifies God. And so as we close, thankfully this lockdown, it won't last forever. It will come to an end. But God's grace is eternal. I used to work at a church in Edinburgh called Charlotte Chapel. And I took a funeral service there one day of a good friend, a really good friend, called Sid Harrison. And the family asked that we sing Amazing Grace. Remember those words? When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Remember looking at Jill, that's Sid's wife, as she sang those words and her face was full of joy. And why? Because she knew the reality of the grace and peace which Jesus alone 
brought last week. It snowed and Benjamin thought he was in snow heaven. Snowball fights and sledging, how good can it get? And by faith, because of a historical event that took place 2,000 years ago on a cross, and because of an empty tomb, believers can look forward to that day when they'll be together with Christ in heaven, ultimately free and free forever. Let me finish with these words from the Scottish pastor, Robert Murray McShane, as he reflected on God's grace. He said this, When this passing world is done, when has sunk yon glaring sun, when I stand with Christ in glory, looking o'er life's finished story, then, Lord, shall I fully know, not till then, how much I owe.